Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about a math topic that appears exclusively on the ACT. This video is actually a follow-on from my exponents video, so if you haven't seen that one, go give that a watch. Today though, we're talking about logarithms, which is something that I feel is overtaught and overcomplicated a lot of the time. And so hopefully today I won't do that, keep it nice and simple and intuitive, so let's take a look. Okay, let's talk logarithms. So. Like I said in my last video, logarithms are the other side of the coin, essentially, to exponents. And because of that, we're going to review the exponent rules really quickly. So we have a to the x times a to the y equals a to the x plus y. So that's adding a to the x divided by a to the y is subtraction a to the x minus y. And power to a power means we multiply. And these two here, which are going to sort of not be too important in this video, are negative exponent, maybe not, our negative exponent means one over whatever that exponent is, and a fractional exponent there. The numerator represents the power, and the denominator represents the root. So keep those in mind, know them generally for the test, keep these in mind as we look at logarithms. And quick disclaimer, logarithms do only appear on the ACT, so if you're just prepping for SAT, you don't need to know this stuff. So I will say that logarithms are a little tricky, and when you first look at them, you will be a little confused maybe, but I will also say that this is something that I feel like gets overtaught uh, in class. And so what I mean by that is that it's presented as this very complicated topic that you really have to memorize this log roll thing that I'm also not going to do uh, in order to get this consistently. And that's just not the case because I think if you think about it the right way, it makes a ton of sense and it is kind of intuitive. So let's talk about why it makes sense. So Usually what we do is we have a number and we raise it to a power and then we have an output. So we know that 10 cubed is a thousandth, it's 10 times 10 times 10. We have two cubed is eight, that makes a ton of sense. Two, four, eight for your powers of two. Always helpful to know a couple of those going up to probably like two to the eighth, by the way. Um, four to the three, that's four cubed, that's 64. I suppose you could rewrite this as two to the two to the three if you wanted to. It's always good practice. And we have 12 cubed. And then maybe this instance is like, oh, this is the first thing we need to find out because what is 12 times 12 times 12? And that's what we're looking for. But what we're doing with logarithms is different. Instead of having a number and an exponent and the issue being finding what the output is, we have a base and an output, and we need to know what the exponent is. And so that's the difference. So in exponents, we are output hunting. In logarithms, we are exponent hunting. And so that's where this all comes in. So just by the way, this is the example that I always use when I am solving logarithm questions. So, you know, another callback, if you watch our trigonometry video, I will always say to write down SOHCAHTOA next to a trigonometry question. I say just write down this next to any logarithm question so you don't get anything backwards. I find this just to be super useful in navigating my way through logarithm questions. And so here's what it is. You know, like I mentioned, we know that 10 cubed is 1,000 for sure. And so then I already always write that next to log base 10 of 1,000. And so what that's saying, what the logarithm is indicating is this base right here, that's the base of the number. And 1,000 is the output. And so log base 10 of 1,000 says 10 to what power equal, equals 1,000. And we're super familiar. We absolutely know that 10 to the power of 3 equals 1,000. So that's how logarithms work. It's saying we have a base, we have an output. What's the exponent? And so looking at these two examples here, log base 2 of 8, what does that mean? Well, take a second, first of all, and you figure it out. Well, what that's saying is it's saying 2 to what power equals Eight. And I've already listed up here that 2 cubed is 8, and you also know that. And then for this last little example here, we're saying, okay, well, 3 to what power is 27? And that's 3. And so here's also one reason that logarithms can be kind of confusing, because, you know, the log base 10 of 1,000 is 3. And the log base 2 of 8 is also 3. And the log base 3 of 27 is also 3. And the log base 4 
of 64 is also 3. So I can certainly understand how that can be a little bit unusual because these all have the same output. But that's the point here. We're just looking for the exponent. And so with this in mind, what we need to inspect are a couple of rules associated with doing logarithms. So it's not just enough to understand what you're doing when you're finding an exponent exponent output for logarithms. There's also some rules that you need to have at the ready because, you know, just like exponent questions, logarithm questions can be nice little tricky puzzles. And that's always a ton of fun. So the first trick here is called the product rule. And, you know, trick maybe is the wrong word. The first little property of logarithms here is how we're going to connect uh, logarithms to exponents once again. So they're saying that log base A of x times y equals log base A of x plus log base A of y, which may make you a little confused at start. But when you realize that, so we're hunting for exponents here, and we already know that power times the power is adding. And these outputs are just the exponents. This actually makes a ton of sense. And so once again, going back to my log base 10 of 1,000 example, we'll show, again, why that makes sense. And so log base 10 of 1,000. And so I don't think anybody's going to argue with me by saying that 100 times 10 is 1,000, which it certainly is. And so I've split up 1,000 in that way, 10 times 100. And then what this rule says that I can do is if I'm multiplying these two, I can split it into log base 10 of 10 and log base 10 of 100. And just a little quick check here for if we're looking correctly at how logarithms work, log base 10 of 10. So that's asking 10 to what power equals 10? And that is 1, right? Because, you know, anything to the power of 1 is itself. And then 10 to what power is 100? That's 2, which is where I get 1 plus 2 equals 3. So the product rule is saying that when you have two things multiplied, when we're taking the log base whatever of that, we can split them into, the bases need to be the same, by the way. This can't split from log 10 into like log 2 and log 5. It needs to be log 10 and 10. So that's two things we can add then instead of having them multiplied inside of the same property. And so next rule here probably comes as minimally surprising that if we are able to multiply to add, now we can just say that, that if we are dividing, we are subtracting. And so just to change things up a little bit for my illustration here, I have used log base 2 of 32 over 4 instead of log base 10 of 1,000, um, just to say that it'll still make sense, it'll still work. So we're saying, what's the log base 2 of 32 over 4? Well, we can. our rule says that the log base 2 of 32 minus log base 2 of 4 will be the same thing as dividing. And so we need to just solve these out and say, OK, 2 to what power? equals 32. So we can just write our powers of 2 over here. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. 2 to the 4 is 16. 2 to the 5 is 32. And going on from there, 64, 128, 256, 512, etc. And so, yep, hey, we got our 5 right there. And then 2 to what power is 4? And that would be our second one there. So that's 2. And so we subtract 2, five, uh, two from 5, and we get 3. And I think I've said this in previous videos, if you told me that I was going to get to college by adding one and two together and subtracting two from five, I'd be pretty happy about it. And so as just a quick check, then we'd say, well, first of all, Tom, like 32 over four, that's that's just eight, right? So you shouldn't really even have to do this, but just to show that it does work. And we say, okay, well, what's the exponent we're going to have if we are, you know, having two as our base and eight as our output? Well, that certainly is three. And so that rule checks out as well. And finally, our power rule. So this final, this last one we're going to look at here is we could say a to the x to the power of y equals a to the xy, which is true. And so power to a power means we multiply. And so what this rule says that we can do here, this is probably the most interesting one, I think, is if you have, this is all sort of in a row here, this is log base a of x to the power of y. And so a little ambiguous there in the italics, but what that's telling you is that this power right here, we can bring out to the front because power to power means we multiply. And so we just be like, all right, well, that's going to live out in front here. And so to illustrate that, we would have something like log base 2 of 16. And we can rewrite 16 as 2 to the fourth, as I did in that previous example. And we can bring that 4 all the way out to the front there. And so this would be 4 times log base 2 of 2. And that's 4 times 1 is 4. 
And so those are our four logarithm rules that you'll see consistently on these tests. Uh, now let's take a look at some example problems to apply what we've learned. Okay, two sample problems here. The first one is multiple choice, and the second one is free response. And so I, it's not that I forgot to put in answers there for number two. I just have decided to see if you can figure it out on your own. And so for both of these, I'd say you don't really need to use your calculator. So if you want to challenge yourself, I would say don't. But again, like I said, logarithms will only appear on ACT, and ACT is all calculator. So if you feel like using your calculator, feel free. Okay, so looking at this first one, they have log base 2 of something equals negative 6. What is x? And so the way that we want to read this is effectively saying our base is right there too. This right here is our exponent. And this right here is our output. And so this is effectively an exponent question, just phrased as a log question. Absolutely something you'll see on the ACT. I very, something, saw something very similar to this pretty recently. And so now we just got to know what our negative exponents mean. And that's just going to be 1 over 2 to the 6th power. And 2 to the 6th power is 64. Moving on to the next one, this is pretty interesting. So you have log base 5 of 2 plus log 2 log 5 of 10 minus 3 over 2 log 5 of 4. That's a mess. There's a lot going on there. And so what I'd like for you to take from this is looking at these pluses and minuses. And what those are showing is since these are all the same base, this is a multiply and this is a subtraction. So <laughs> let's, let's resolve the, the multiplicative multiplicative part first. So what this is saying is, and also I, this is sort of getting in the way here, so I'm going to put this over there. And remember, this is, this is the power rule. This is basically the reverse of that. So what this is saying is we have the log base 5 of 2. And be careful with putting this 2 back over here, because it's not 2 times 10, it's 10 squared. So it's 2 times 10 squared. And that's minus 3 over 2. And I suppose we can do the same thing here. We can Put that over here to the 4. So that's minus log base 5 of 4 to the power of 3 over 2. And so the next thing we'll do is a bit more simplification. So 2 times uh, 10 squared is going to be 200. And then this right here, that's 4 to the 3 over 2. So great exponent review here. 4 to the power of 3 over 2 is going to be, we can probably just do the square root first and say that this is 2 cubed, which is going to be 8. And so we can say, okay, you right there, this is like the log base 5 of 8. And so I'm going to incorporate that into my subtraction rule. So that's quotient, that's division. So all of this can be rewritten as log base 5 of 200 divided by 8. So very interesting there. And the nice thing about dividing 200 by 8 is that's a pretty familiar value. That's uh, 25. And 5 to what power is 25? That's 2. And so amazingly, this whole thing is just 2. And so uh, that's a pretty tricky logarithm question. Um, bridging on, more difficult than you'll see in the test. But you know there, the ACT math sections are getting harder, so you may well see something like this. Okay, that's it for this video. At first glance, logarithms can seem kind of unintuitive, but hopefully by connecting them to exponents in the way that I've done, I've sort of illustrated how they can be practical and how they can be not that bad. These are some of the more difficult questions on the ACT, so if you can wrap your head around this, you're in really good shape. If you found this material useful, we hope that you'll like and share the video and subscribe to Quad Education. Please reach out if you have